Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and the show features Joy Baker. She is back once again, and Joy is here to talk today about creating money in the new earth. Yummy. She's also going to be taking live caller healings and offering a group process. So just know, even if you're not one of those who gets on, and I know everybody would love a healing with her, you have two options. One is listen, because every time she gifts somebody with healing, we're all receiving. I know I can feel it no matter who she's working on here. So just receive, sit back and enjoy and receive. And the other thing is, of course, you can always work with her. And I want to say that we are definitely going to have her back in the future and have her back a little more regularly. So if you're somebody who really wants to get on for one of these Zooms, these calls, then go ahead, like, and subscribe this show, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Do it now. Send us proof that you're doing it so we know you're really an engaged audience member. Go to Joy's website, participate. She's got free membership and she gives things away for free. You can go to her website at Courage in Action. Dot com. My website is debbiedashinger.com. So really engage with us. And then we're going to see what we can do to get the most amount of people on. Awesome. So that said, Dare to Dream won the COVR Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show, listed in Welp Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. One of the top self-improvement on Apple Podcasts, Two People's Choice Podcast nominations, and a Webby Award nomination. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane Here and Access Consciousness. They do energy work, and they also teach you how to be a facilitator. If you'd like to learn more, go to Dr. Dane Here, H-E-E-R.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger, and I'm a media visibility specialist. I disseminate how you can be more visible in three possible ways. First of all, I am a book writing coach. You can join our ongoing book writing club. We meet twice a month on Zoom, and I coach everybody to go from the inception of your idea to amazing book and published. I also take your book to a guaranteed international best-selling status. I do all the heavy lifting for you. And finally, I have a program called the Ultimate Visibility Formula that teaches you how to be interviewed on radio and podcast and how to get massive results. Where can you start? Well, let me give you a gift for free. And in this free gift, it will start giving you templates and how-to videos so you can start doing all these things yourself and become way more visible it's why you came here. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. Joy Baker, back again. She is a remarkable and compassionate soul dedicated to guiding her clients on a profound journey of emotional release and healing. With a unique expertise in untangling the threads of trapped emotions resulting from trauma, Joy's work transcends conventional healing practices. Joy's mission is rooted in the understanding that trauma can silently shape our lives, affecting our emotions, actions, experiences, and even our physical well-being. Joy knows firsthand the importance of addressing these silent echoes of pain. Joy had a childhood marked by adversity, encompassing abuse, epilepsy, speech impediments, and relentless bullying, which ignited an unquenchable fire within her to rise above and heal it all. Clients who have had the privilege of experiencing her clearings and activations shed the weight of past traumas paving the way for authenticity, empowerment, and a rekindled zest for life. You can learn more by visiting courageinaction.com. And with that, I welcome the esteemable Joy Baker back to Dare to Dream. I'm excited for today's show. So am I. It's so great to be back on your show, Debbie. I'm looking it's... forward to talking about money and money in the new work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's what I love about you. Expect the unexpected. 
And because people are going to be calling in later, I, who knows where this is going to go, but I'm in for the ride. It's, it's awesome. exciting. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about money. And I want to start with the fact that <clears throat> here you are successful. And in fact, I found you originally, I was listening to something else that you were featured on. And I listen to these things periodically and oh, person, person, very talented healers always. But it's the every rare occasion where I'll be like, oh, this person's amazing. And I'll get <laughs> puddled and I'll feel <laughs> healing and I can literally see things leaving me and you're not even working on me. And that's how I found you. So here you are so successful, but once upon a time, you endured two bankruptcies and you were having quite a mm -hmm. time of it. So just briefly talk about that journey and how did you get here? <laughs> like you said, I went through, a, 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 you know, it's a long journey, but so I went through a lot of bowling, extremely shy as a child. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I horses, I was great with. I loved horses and animals. People were completely, I had no idea how to communicate with them whatsoever. Ended up leaving the horses. I realized, you know, that just couldn't keep that going as a career. And I I knew from the time I started in this, you know, the personal growth spiritual field almost 30 years ago, I wanted to become some kind of a coach, but I didn't value myself enough. And that's, and I want people to hear that it was when you don't, money is attracted to people who value themselves and offer value to others, but it starts with value in yourself. And we all have value. And that was a lesson I so had to learn. And so, yeah, I, I just, it, I went bankrupt, not because I was spending money, because I didn't believe in myself enough. And I didn't have a good enough relationship with money to make much. I literally could hardly survive. So yeah, I went a lot of shame around both bankruptcies, didn't do it easily. But finally, the second one, that was when I said, okay, things are going to change. And I was ready. And it was shortly after declaring it the second time, I, I said, it's time to start the business. And I started it, I left my, you know, final job, I've done several different jobs after leaving the horses. I had last paycheck, $4,000, no savings, no credit cards, no investments, nobody I could count on money for, and no clients. <laughs> and I just went, okay, so how, that was one of the benefits for those that have struggled all their life, you know, with money. One of the benefits of struggling with money is I knew how to live on very little and I knew how to go without when, you know, when I, when necessary. And so I went, okay, so what do I have to do to start this business? Because I'd made the commitment. I was committed. It was time, you know, when you know it's time. And I just thought, well, I could do some chair massage. So I found somebody who was contracting out chair massage practitioners and got a certificate from her because we do corporate accounts sometimes and got a little bit of work from that, started, you know, offering my services for next to nothing and just and but the biggest thing I did during that time, Debbie, was I would call on the universe and I was very clear. I wasn't angry, but it's like a clear command. It's like, OK, universe, if you want me to be doing this and this is the path I'm supposed to be on and this is how I'm going to be making a difference, send me either clients or a chair massage contract now. And every time, I, so there was no anger or desperation. It was just really clear every time within 24 hours that happened. There was one time I remember standing in the kitchen going, how am I going to do this? No food in the house, bills to pay, rent to pay, and I had $40 in the bank. Like that was it. And so I remember saying that to the universe. And sure enough, I got a, said she a month long chair massage contract the next day. And yeah, that happened until I got the invite on the first show. And, you know, so, and then it's just, that was eight years ago. Wait. So, okay, <laughs> that's an awesome story. And <laughs> I want to get that one transition. So you get a month long massage contract, which is amazing. I'm sure at that moment, that's like so sustainable when you've been struggling. And so you get this, but you said before you got invited on the next show. So that begs me to ask, did you always have healing gifts? Did you know 
you're like an x-ray machine. I don't understand mm -hmm. how you know what you know or see what mm -hmm. you see. It's pretty remarkable. So were you always like that? Was that no. part of the bullying? No, uh, no, I was, I actually became very shut down, extremely shut down. Like, you know, they call them zombies now. I used to call myself the walking dead. Like my eyes were just blank and I felt nothing. First time a coach said to me, how do you want to feel going forward? I had no idea what she meant. Like, what are, what are feelings? And she, she brought out a feeling sheet and I said, well, happiness, I guess. And I mean, I had no, so I was completely and absolutely 100% as shut down as you could be. And I was as completely embedded as possible in 3D consciousness. Like I didn't, I didn't know there was anything else. So I believe, you know, now looking back, I can see as a child, I, I had this, I don't know if there were healing gifts, but I had that level of compassion within me. But then it just got shut down with, you know, trauma that happened growing up, some of what you mentioned in that, and then believing I had no value and such. And I just became more and more shut down until, it, you know, I, I started on this path, something introduced me to this path of uh, personal growth. And then I just went from there and I started. And it was like, I, I always tell people now and tell my clients, one of the biggest things we can do to change well, let's, yeah, money situation, friendships, uh, relationships, anything like that is your self-talk. And that was one thing I had to really take a look at. Your self-talk creates the energy within you and that's the energy you're radiating out. And the energy you're radiating out is, radiating out is what you're going to get back. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, self-talk is just, but I had, I mean, it took me years to do that and a lot of conscious intention to really change my self-talk. And nice. I still have to pay attention to it, of course. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Oh, I'm so glad you said yes. I'm so glad you stepped in. I'm mm -hmm. so glad you blossomed because what a gift, what a gift you are. We're talking about money in the new earth, specifically creating money in the new earth. So I, I understand actually both components, but I'm not sure I understand them together. I understand creating money. I understand the new earth. Can you talk about what that means? We're used to creating money and creating our life from struggle. And that's 3D consciousness. And those of us have been on the path for a while, we're used to going deep down that, you know, I call it the rabbit hole of of the drama and trauma and, and despair and all of that and working through our stuff in that way and creating money in that way, which is struggle and it's heavy and it's a hardship in that. What we're being asked to now by the universe, by our angels, we're being asked to spend more and more time in our the consciousness of our desires and higher, like higher emotional frequencies. So instead of say, asking questions when you do your inner work of, you know, what's wrong with me? Why can't I get this? What am I doing wrong? We used to do that. And that was, a, but it's, it's just not anymore. And so I'm going to ask anybody who's doing that, what am I doing wrong? Or how did I get this wrong? To simply acknowledge it. You don't ignore it, you acknowledge it and then say, okay, it's time to let you go. Just let it go. And then say, what do I desire? How do I really want to live my life? How do I want to, you know, be able to communicate in relationships? Because we have a relationship with money. When we improve our relationship with money, we improve our relationships with others. When we improve our relationships with others, our relationship with money will improve as well. It's money is a consciousness. It's like, let's say there's a hundred dollar bill on the floor, you know, some money on the floor. And if you look at it, I mean, it's, it's not doing anything. It's not moving until somebody takes action bends down, picks it up. And it's a person that is handling the money that determines whether the money does good or it does bad or evil, or it just stays stuck in a bank account, stagnant. And so how are you interacting with money? How do you feel about money? And now some people think that's, you know, Pollyanna or just positive thinking. That's not what it's about. When you decide what you're, allow yourself to have desires and dreams and you focus on that, you give that energy and emotion, 
you know, feel yourself being happy. We've all have mo have had moments where we've been happy. We've uh, felt gratitude and such. So bring those up, infuse your desires with that. And then all that other stuff is going to come up. In other words, when you're in, when you are embodying a really high emotional frequency and you're thinking big, all the dense energies, anxiety, fear, anger, shame, guilt, it's all going to come up anyways. What we often do is we'll feel so good and passionate and excited and looking forward to it. And then all this stuff will come up and we'll go, oh man, I'm back there again. When all we really need to do is acknowledge it, accept it and let it go. And then we can, that's how we move more easily and effortlessly into the you know higher realms. But yeah, I just... I want to say that uh, again, what I said at the beginning, we are being asked by the universe source to spend more time. In other words, instead of spending the majority of our time in the, the lower emotional frequencies, fear and such, guilt and anger, spend your time in your desires. Now that takes conscious intention because it's not what we're, you know, we're taught or we've been taught for thousands of years. We've been taught to, you know, muck around in the heaviness and the density of 3D consciousness of the matrix. So make an intention for yourself to every day, spend time in your desires and let yourself feel that. Let's say you want to go traveling, go swimming with the dolphins or something. Well, that might just be, okay, it's a desire, but you can't feel into it. Well, then think of times when you were happy. I mean, it could be any time when you were happy or you felt good or you felt free and you literally infuse the two together and then you start to feel that. Imagine, you know, going out swimming with playful dolphins, feeling free, having them come up to you and that. And then, yeah, there's some relaxation and ease. Now, as you move into the higher frequencies and you feel calm and expansive, because then you start to expand, that's when you know you're in the higher realms of consciousness, you know, the, the density will come up. That's okay. Let's say fear comes up or, or doubt, oh, I don't deserve that. Just say, oh, okay, I, I see you there that I doubt and not deserving and feeling not worthy and I acknowledge you. And I appreciate what you've done for me up until this time, but it's time for you to be released because I'm ready to go swim with the dolphins. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Oh man. So first of all, I see a hundred dollars and that's unexpected. And I want to take you to dinner. And <laughs> so Joy, will you join me for dinner? On Absolutely. me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And yeah. second of all, what, what, how beautiful what you're saying, you know, I have two practices, one that puts me to sleep and one that I utilize when I wake up ish sometimes is within the two hour time frame after mm -hmm. I wake up, but I do it every day. So the first one, when I go to sleep every night and I close my eyes, there's a weird transition. I always feel after you close your eyes before you fall under and I use that time to go to what I call zero point, where I go to no thing, mm. right? Nothing exists there. I see pure blackness. And into that space is me. And I put all these things I want to create. And I just, yeah, I be with that. And then at some point, I'm fast asleep. I don't even know. And then in the morning, because I've got shamanic practices, I visualize as part of those practices, when I'm in a really beautiful expanded state, I visualize what I desire. I call them my longings. And I literally see them planted in the ground and the soil. And I see them being watered and growing. I see them mm -hmm. have sunshine and growing and fruiting. And then I see the wind coming and taking the fruits and the seeds and spreading it across all the lands. And then I see the divine light come down. And it is so beautiful because I feel like every time I win, the universe wins. Every time I win, humanity wins. Because first of all, the money's going back, right? To somebody in some places. And second of all, my joy is extending out there. And, you know, maybe people are learning by watching me as I'm learning by watching them. There's just so much to what this is. And yeah, and and my money has gotten so much better. So much better. Wow. And 
Good something you. you said is so apropos when you said it's it is a relationship mm -hmm. and like relationships and that is so true because i watch concurrently as my relationship has gotten better my money has gotten better and i wasn't working on both of them but it is very true mm -hmm. is there any energy here you are with everything i said cuz there's maybe many people listening going well i do lots of good stuff also is there any energy that you feel could be released anything dense or otherwise yeah first of all i want to say debbie those are two empowering empowering exercises there the mm -hmm. actually the energy field or the zero point energy field that's a field of all possibilities and so yeah anytime you want to connect to the field of all possibilities just even imagine the zero point energy field because until we can really get there and feel it sometimes we imagine it i mean that's so yeah imagine it and and then it becomes you know then it becomes real and then your reality yeah before when you were talking at the beginning and i was imagining like re everybody receiving money i was bringing in the consciousness of money and just as you were talking now again about money anxiety is coming up yeah i just felt that and the reason for that is see if we haven't had much money or we've used money to you know, quit our job, not quit our job and start a business or not travel or not do something. We've used that as a, as an excuse often, you know, especially, you know, if you're an introvert or an empath or highly sensitive, you want to live more of a smaller life, many people. And so when we have more, the more money we have, the more we're going to go into life and experience life. Hmm. And then if we think of the world, we've been through abuse or trauma and think of the world as a bad place or a dangerous place, we'll get to a point where we're dreaming about it, we're imagining it, we're right on the cusp of it. Because as soon as a person spends, sends an intentional frequency to the universe, the universe set, starts to send that to us. Mm -hmm. What gets in the way is doubt. I'm not worthy. You know, I, I don't deserve it. Different things like that. I, you know, it's always been this way. So that's why we have to do this on a daily basis. And so as you're- so I you just want to preface, it. if I may interrupt. So when you say you, you you heard the words and then you felt this anxiety come up, you mean from the group at large, the group that's here live and the group that's will be with mm -hmm. us in the replay, or you mean from me? Oh, no, from every, from everybody. Yeah. I just want quantum, them to yeah. And good, good question. In the quantum space, it's all happening now. So whether they're listening to the replay or live or, but yeah, even before it wasn't the words, it was anxiety I felt. And that is the thought, not so much of making money per se. Money is always about something else, never about the money. It's about, and this is what's coming in. It's about if I have more money, then I'm going to have to go out and experience the world in a bigger way. And I want to, but, and that's the biggest thing. There's, you know, everybody's got their butt, but what if this person doesn't like it? What if they don't like it? What will they think if I have more money? Do I really deserve it? And, you know, am I worthy of having that much money? Am I worthy of traveling to Italy or this place or that? And then, then and that's when the, and that's when the universe was again, the universe is like, yeah, I'll send you all the money you want. But then as soon as that comes in, it stops. And that's the anxiety that was coming up. So all the ways, let's see, let's do a bit of clearing here. Let's see. All the ways the thought of, well, it excites you and inspires you. There's also all the fears of what will they think? What if I'm not good enough? What am I really deserving? Where everybody's got their own, you know, fears and anxieties there. Let's witness all of that. Just bring that all in. Okay, there you go. There's some anger. That's matrix anger. I'll explain that in a moment. Okay, so that's matrix anger. So yes, matrix anger, we see you. You're no longer gonna keep us small. It's yeah, no, matrix anger, it's time for you to leave. Get on out of here. There you go. There. Okay. So now there's some shame coming up. And the shame is coming from first and second chakra. Yeah, both. Okay. So this is childhood wounds. Okay. So let's witness the, the shame around, you know, abuse as a child, trauma, feeling ignored, not good enough, shame. Let's just bring that all in. Just give yourself permission as much as you're ready to bring that all in and together. 
Again, as much as you're ready, you know how ready you are for this, we'll release it to the universe. Just give that to source, ask source to remove and release your cares, worries, burdens, stresses. There you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you, source. We are grateful. Okay, there you go. So let's, a little bit of shame there. This is focused right on the second chakra. And the second chakra is about connection, relationships, creativity, sexuality. So let's look at that shame. Okay, so that's triggering the fight or flight. So we're just going to witness a fight or flight there. That's a scared child. So we'll just witness a fight or flight. And let's just let the child know that they're safe. You can even say to yourself, you know, I'm safe. You're safe, child. I am safe. We are safe. There you go. There's some relaxation in here. Okay. So shokabasa wala sa shoko kawala sa abasa wala sa shokabasa wala ka baba ka wala sa shoko kawasa wala ka awala sa so shokabasa wala ka. Now give yourself permission to imagine receiving money. You've experienced using, having money your entire life, experiencing money. Imagine experiencing more and more money. Imagine if greater amounts of money flowed into your life easily and effortlessly, and you allowed yourself to receive them. You allowed yourself to receive ever increasing amounts of money with gratitude, with blessings, blessing money, blessing yourself, feeling blessed receiving money and feeling good, feeling good about receiving ever increasing amounts of money. There you go, there's some happiness. Okay, take a deep breath in, let that go. There you go. Awesome. Well, <laughs> not that I've run out of questions for you ever, <laughs> but... <laughs> Thank you for that. That was beautiful. And we've got our first person calling in. I'm going to admit them on to the show. And we're bringing on David Chatfield. And David, once you come on, you can unmute yourself. Thank you so much for being here with us on Dare to Dream. I'm introducing you to Joy Baker. And uh, we lost him. Bummer. <laughs> so... You know, while I'm sure he's going to try to come back in, let me ask you this other question. When you were on the show last month, Joy, people wrote the most beautiful comments and really felt your work. And I just want to give a little quote because one person wrote this and I want to ask you about it. And she wrote, I believe it's a she, deep, beautiful, deep sessions. I love your clearings. There are many wonderful comments like that. And so she kept writing, I don't understand the overwhelming rush of tears or the mm. tightness in my throat right now after listening to this podcast. <clears throat> Excuse me. Perhaps this necessitates a call to action to schedule some time with joy. Thank you, Debbie, for this video. So David's back. So while we're letting David back into the room, because this could happen to other people listening or to watching, can you address what is that overwhelming rush of tears she had, the tightness in her throat? What is that about? That is, it's a, and I felt that as well at times. It's like a really, really deep place of feeling understood. You know, we all want to be understood and when, and it's beyond what I'm saying, and it's not from me, it's feeling understood by source, by all that is. And it's that depth of, depth of divine understanding, like divine understanding you at a place that is beyond what we ever experience on this planet. And that brings up almost a kind of grief because it's something we've longed for all our lives. I mean, we were we're coming from a place of purity, of light, of absolute complete beauty. And it's like our, our souls, the depths of us desire that again, but this world doesn't even allow us to, to really know that or understand it. And when we feel it, that's exactly what comes up. And I can feel that deep longing for that. That's what she's looking for. And is that and she felt that she felt that was so it wasn't me or my words it was the divine presence coming through me 
and that's what she she connected with and that's what brought that up beautiful well i told her to have a session with you <laughs> so david welcome to the show it is so Hi, good david. to have you and please meet joy baker joy please meet david hi how are you doing hi. we're great gonna... great great and if you would just state your name and what it is you'd like joy to take a look at or help you with today and then if joy needs to ask it doesn't have to be a story you can get to the point but if joy has more questions so sir she will ask you okay um my name is david chatfield and i am uh in the process of building a record company and um money has never really been an issue with me in my life but it could be because the company is growing faster then the income is coming in. And that's always what happens in a new business. So that's my problem. That the company has grown faster than the money is coming in. So you don't have the money to keep moving forward on like certain David, areas. can I bust you a little bit? Yeah. Isn't there another component here having to do with something that's leaving your life? I think that's where Joy could really help you. Okay, yeah, well, before, I, uh, before you say that, David, yeah, maybe that's what it is, because there's some anger stuck in your heart, your heart chakra. Well, I have uh, an ex-wife who was uh, trying to chase me for all my assets. How's that? <laughs> okay, yeah, that's where the anger is. Okay, so, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, a lot of anger. That's your heart chakra and your throat. It's really shutting down your throat. And you're wanting to literally scream and rage at her. And yet, you know, that's you're more evolved than that. And, and I'm not saying this is a conscious thing, but there's a part of you is just trying to say, like, like, leave me alone. And I just let me move forward with my life. She's still very, she's got a lot of anger. And yeah, she's very angry. See, and then your anger feeling stifled and stalled by her is connecting to her anger and it's keeping you two still stuck together. And, oh, there you go. Okay, there's the anger. So let's witness this, oh, the anger, there you go. So a lot of shame in there. Okay, so yeah, a lot of shame you're feeling around the, the relationship, like the that it's not working out and what happened within it. And so let's witness the shame. So it's actually that these, so the anger and the shame, very heavy, stagnant energies, they are uh, preventing the money flow. Any ways in which your ex has put a, not really a curse, but kind of like a slight curse. She feels like she's at some point, maybe unconsciously, but uttered the words, even or thought the words that she wants to, she like she doesn't want to see you do well. and. Well, she hasn't specifically said she wants to um, like curb your financial income. The two go together. So there you go. So any ways in which your ex said, put any kind of a, a curse or directed harmful thoughts towards you that is like trying to slow down your success. That's what it was, trying to slow down your success. Okay, so a little bit of jealousy on her part here. So we just witnessed that. Okay, so that... Oh, there you go. That brought up some uh, a grief within you. Okay, there's grief. Okay, so there's grief coming up within you. And she feels a little bit off balance now. You release something really intense there. She feels a little bit off balance. See, because you two were so connected through anger. In this moment, you've released that. She's off balance. She's not sure what her next move is going to be yet. And okay, so now you're feeling grief and that may seem strange to feel you're feeling grief because you're like free to move forward now. But even though that was toxic and dysfunctional, see, that can be very familiar. That's comforting in our comfort zone. And so we still want to grieve that loss. So let's, you know, give you permission to grieve the loss of any toxic energy, any dysfunctional energy or drama. There you go. Just take a deep breath in. Let that go. Okay, there's your anger being released. So just 
breathe. Remember to breathe deeply. Let that anger be released. We're going to send that anger that has been within you and been connecting you and your ex up until now to the light. There you go. There's some shame. And again, there's so any ways in which you feel shame around any behavior you exhibited during the relationship or any ways you think it's your fault or anything like that. Let's just witness the shame. Uh, it's actually been the shame blocking the financial flow. And so let's align your financial flow with the progression and success of your business. And so that you can bring as many artists as possible to the light, to the public. There you go. Okay, there, there's some shame and almost like a fighting energy here. So let's just witness that fighting energy. Not sure where it's coming from. It may not necessarily be from this lifetime, but we'll just you know, witness the fighting energy, the shame, let that all go. And again, let's bring in success, aligning you with all components of success, money, action, partners, artists, there you go. Okay, a little bit of shame coming in. Any ways in which you feel shame around being successful? It's not really, David, your shame, but it's others that have felt you have caused you to feel shame around being successful. There you go. Yeah, let's just let that go. Okay, so we are going to ask money, specifically request and ask money to keep up with the success of your business. Hmm, okay, so when I said that, uh, money said you don't want that for some reason. Okay, so any reasons that you unconsciously or maybe consciously do not want money to keep up with the success of your business, anybody else that does not want money to keep up with the success of your business, let's just let that go on all levels, mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, cellular, and throughout all time and space. There you go. There, the anger just bust out from your heart chakra there. Social kabasa, wala social ko, ko wala sa, aligning money and the speed and success of your business. There you go. Expansion, seeing, witnessing expansion, supporting artists, supporting creatives. There you go. There's the happiness and joyfulness. Social kabasa, wala ka, wala sa, social kabasa, wala ka, wala social ko, ko wala sa. It's going to do a little work on your throat chakra to free up your throat chakra. So let's send some blessings and grace to your throat chakra. Any stuck energy, any stuck words or frequencies in your throat chakra? Any anger or shame that's stuck there? Let's ask that to be released easily and effortlessly and gently. There you go. Just take a deep breath in, David. Let that go. <laughs> Thank you for that question. Thank you. Wow. That was powerful. Um, yeah. I felt all of that. And I actually, my right knee was hurting so much in the beginning of that work. And, and I tapped into something right there at the, towards the end, Joy, when you were, you were addressing that what was coming up for David was this um, not wanting to have money. And my spidey senses were saying, that makes sense. Because if your wife, your ex-wife is coming after you for all your assets, there has to be a confusion there, right? Mm -hmm. His organic self might be very like, of course, money. I know money. We have a good relationship and this is the way it is. But then there's this piece that like wants to keep it from another human being um, mm -hmm. who's not behaving well. So yeah, mm -hmm. that was popping for me. And it made a lot of sense that that was coming up, that you were perceiving that. How are you feeling, David? I feel great. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Awesome. That was amazing. Thank amazing. You. Thank you. It was powerful. Um, thank you, David. Thanks for thank joining you. us today. Thank you very much. And we're going to bring in the next person. And uh, Bettina is here. We're going to release David from the show. And... I'll let David remove himself. And uh, Bettina, 
Welcome to the show. It is so great to have you. Awesome glasses. <laughs> hey, Bettina. Hi, Joy. How are you? <laughs> Good. It's great to connect with you. Yeah, you too. I love it. <laughs> so you're going to give Joy your name, even though it's on the screen, but so she can connect with you and whatever is going on for you, go for it because she's amazing and she'll help you. Great. My name is Bettina Hubby. And um, I love this topic. I've been becoming more and more friends with money, um, greeting it, thanking it, uh, paying my bills immediately and thanking it for the water and all of that. Um, but I would like to get to the root of, you know, patterns with money. My, um, my childhood was very mysterious with money. My, my father received it. Um, from his parents, but then didn't really give it to us. It's always come in to me very mysteriously. So there's a sense of not feeling safe. Um, although I do feel very supported and have had so many blessings, um, there isn't like this, you know, consistent, reliable source, not that anything's reliable or consistent, but I would love to clear any blocks that had to do with childhood um, abusive childhood emotionally and, and just got out of a relationship that was very complex. Um, and I supported that person for many, many years. Uh, so I know that there's lots of juicy stuff in there for you to look at. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Bettina. So I want to ask you, first of all, let's say money started flowing in, you know, greater amounts of money and, what are some of your desires? What do you want to, like, what would you utilize that money for? What do you want to experience? Well, I've been opening up my home to uh, different kinds of artistic expressions. I would continue, continue to build it. I sort of look at it as a temple for joyous actions, uh, song, dance, music, healings, um, you know, inviting in joyous experiences for other people. Um, and not charging them for it. So having that be like my service to my okay. community and also, you know, doing my artwork without any boundaries, being able to experiment with different ideas and get them out in the world. I have so many ideas that I've been graced by spirit with, and I just want to have more of an audience and more money to support me doing that because I have a lot of energy and, and mm -hmm. plenty of ideas. <laughs> Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, so when you were talking earlier, I could feel in your second chakra, the fight or flight, like a child trying to get away. Okay, mm -hmm. there's a little bit of fight energy there. So imagine more and more money is coming in. So greater amounts of money, just imagine the money's flowing in. So you can just see, you know, trillions of dollars are circulating around us all the time. Imagine you can just reach your hand out and that money's coming in. So while I'm doing the clearing, just keep imagining money coming in because we want to bring stuff up here. So see yourself just reaching your hands out and money just coming in. People handing money to you, just money, bills of money, or it can be, you know, online payments, just money coming in. There you go. There's anxiety coming up. Okay, here's the fight or flight. You're wanting to run away. And so you're really torn right now. It's like you want to run away from this. And yet the desire to, you know, create healing, uplifting artistic spaces for people to expand your art, to be free to do your art. There you go. That, yeah. So you're in this very stuck place. It feels quite stagnant at you. It feels stagnant, but I don't think you, Bettina, have been stagnant. It feels like you've been, you know, taking action. So any ways in which the actions you've been taking, well, they've moved you forward and it's, it's like, it's like the actions you've been taking have put you in another direction, but it's still stagnant. Oh, yeah, even just identifying that your whole self relax, there's a part of you that says, oh, my gosh, that's just how it's felt. So, okay, so now you can relax, knowing that, imagine going forward, and now you're creating your space, so you can invite people in, that's a way, you know, a way for you to give back, you're, you've got all the time freedom you want, because all the money, you know, of all the money that's coming in, 
to create your art, you're selling your art. And okay, so when I said selling your art, some anxiety came up there. You kind of tensed up there and got yeah, a little bit anxious. So imagine you sell your art, don't you? Yes, I sell yeah, it, okay. but not, not enough to uh, support the overhead. Yet. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, keyword there. Okay, so see yourself selling your art and okay, there you go, there. Yeah, I just heard somebody say, oh, I will not do that. So I wanna talk to this part of you. It's kind of your inner child a little bit, but it's also, it's more your conditioned self. Okay, so, so the part of you that is adamant, you will not sell your art. Any part of you that believes you're not deserving and worthy of selling your art, of having others pay their money to purchase your art, that is because you are seeing, you're valuing money more than you are valuing your art. So first of all, let's witness that. All the ways you're valuing money more than you're valuing the contribution your art can make to others. There you go. Yeah, there you go. There's some grief coming up. So that was, you let go of that in a big way that brought up the grief. So money is a value exchange. So you want to decide whether it's art or anything else that somebody is selling or promoting or, you know, service you're providing, what is your value to others with your art? So is it, it's a high frequency art that raises when it's in somebody's home, it supports and raising their consciousness. That's, you know, energy frequency. Money is simply energy. So a money exchange, it's a value exchange, money, when somebody gives you money, it's a value exchange, it's actually an energy exchange. So really sit with your art and determine like, what is the value? Why? And that will support you in your, uh, your target market as well. Like, what is the value to others? Is it designed to bring color into people's lives? Color has, you know, vibration and frequency. And is it designed to inspire people? It is, is, is it designed to calm people? And there you go, your whole self relaxed. And then know that you are exchanging a frequency and a frequency of consciousness and value your art because it brings you happiness. It brings you joy. See, when you are creating your art, the only way to create art is it's a creative process. It's from the fifth dimension, the new earth. And when you're creating your art, you're infusing whatever you're creating with whatever you're feeling, joyfulness, happiness, gratitude, freedom, space, and that energy, energy sticks, that energy is in your art. That's what other people are receiving. There you go. And that's why, yeah, you just got it there. Part of you just got it. That's why you deserve and are worthy of receiving that money. So give yourself permission to receive ever increasing amounts of money. There you go, there's some happiness there. I just heard your mind say, I'm ready. And the other thing is anytime, you know, the monkey mind comes in the, you know, I can't do this, I'm not worthy. Just ask yourself, well, what if it is possible for me to receive ever increase amounts of money from with ease, grace, flow from expected and unexpected sources? What if it is possible? You can say, what if it is possible with anything? There you go. What if it is possible for me to have as much time and space as I desire to create my art? What if it is possible for more and more people to purchase my art and for money to start flowing? What if it is possible for me to create this space for people to come and work in and, and share with other artists and provide, you know, or share this, this happiness and joyfulness with others. What if it is possible for me to create, you know, like-minded people, like-minded groups and have it inspiring, invigorating conversations, uplifting conversations. What if it is possible? There you go. There's some happiness. There, so shukabasa wala so shukal, so shukabasa wala ka there. I just felt your whole self relax into that patina. So shukabasa wala ka wala sa shuko ko wala sa wala sa shukabasa wala ka a wala sa so shukabasa wala ka so shukabasa. There, take a deep breath in. 
Let that go. There, how are you feeling? Mm, that's great. I do have a question. So when you are creating, when I am creating my art and I'm not feeling good, should I just back off and go and do something to raise my frequency so that I can come back in? Because I do realize that your energy gets imprinted on whatever you're doing. That depends what you're creating. I want, would you ask yourself, like, am I actually providing my best and doing my best work possible if I'm not happy, if I'm pushing myself to do this, if I'm not feeling inspired to do this, is it coming from my mind or my heart? Right. And if often, you know, when you're not feeling like you really want to do it, it chances are it's coming from your mind and that's your condition self. Mm -hmm. And which isn't bad, but then what, you know, what kind of people do you want to, the, the people, if you want to interact with higher consciousness, uh, clients and customers mm -hmm. and have them purchase, you know, that's who you're going to be marketing your, your product to, mm -hmm. then that's the, yeah, the energy you want to infuse in your art. And cause art is, I mean, it's a creative process. It's, you know, if you're coming from your mind, yeah, that comes through. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That was a great question. Thank you, Bettina, so much. Take care. That was beautiful. You know, and I, folks, I hope you can feel, <clears throat> excuse me, these questions, they are for you too, whatever space you created. And I know I was over here releasing at the same time. So these brave people are a gift for us all. And I'm going to bring in the next mm -hmm. person now. Uh, to the show, I'm going to bring in uh, Dolores to the show. And Dolores, welcome to Dare to Dream. And great to have you here. I'm going to pin you so we can see you better. And just um, okay. introduce yourself to Joy. Joy, this is Dolores. And then let her know whatever's going on with you. Okay, Hi, Dolores. Hi, Joy. I'm uh, very happy to for you to have me here. Uh, you and Debbie both. Thank you so much. Um, I actually was bringing in what's been on my mind, and also based on a past show that you did with Debbie. It was, it was around ancestral trauma, um, but I hear there's more discussion on money. Should I uh, adjust that for you, or? Do you have any suggestions? Money, money is often affected to ancestral trauma okay. anyways. I mean, it's never about money. It's about everything else. So you yeah. ask any question you want. Okay. And also related, um, initially, my thought was that uh, related to some physical, and maybe this is all connected, of course, mm -hmm. uh, I've had, uh, since I was probably about a teenager, uh, a certain amount of scoliosis. Uh, that I've worked with. Um, and you can't really tell just by looking at me, but if I was in a bathing suit, you might notice. And uh, I've noticed since a, in the last few years, it's gotten worse, more painful. I'm just carrying this around. I've been carrying it around my life, my whole life. Of course, I'm aware of my ancestral trauma, which was very significant and another trauma that occurred a few years back. So um, whatever you uh, can offer me related to any of that. You said you're aware of your ancestral trauma and trauma that happened to are you are you referring to anything in specific or or well I know yeah I know what has occurred I why I guess my maybe my question is would that be is there something that needs to be cleared that could help my uh, my situation with my back and my scoliosis um, is there anything that can be done based on uh, oh yeah I've got a client at she's dealt with had scoliosis her whole life and she says it's straightening out a little bit of curvature at the bottom of her spine now but she said it's way straighter than it's ever been in her life and uh so yeah and I've heard of other people too straightening it so it is possible that's the first step know that it is possible and a little bit of anger coming through do you experience a lot of pain with it or, or limitation Yes, especially in a few, the last, let's say, four or five years in particular. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where's the pain through your whole back, lower back, or? Mainly mid. Mid back. What's the curvature like? Can you, like, do you know, and like, is it 33% or do you know what it, okay. 
I don't have a, um, okay. do not have a percentage, but that's around 30. I, okay. I my, is my understanding. Okay. And does it curve mostly in the mid back then, or do you know? Yeah. I okay. it's closer to the mid, lower mid to a little bit under. Oh, there's anger there. Oh, it's past life anger. Did you come in with this then? Like, were you born with scoliosis? Um, no, I don't believe so, but it developed during, let, I believe, teenage years. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So uh, teenage years. Okay, so it's interesting that you weren't born with it. So I wonder, I can, I'm getting a past life here. So we'll just kind of touch on this a little bit. Is this a past life? Yes. Okay, so teenage years. So something that happened... Oh, okay, I'm getting you were in in battle. So I mean, years ago we you know had shorter lives, and so your life ended. And yeah, I'm not going to go into details here because uh, we don't need to do that right now because it's not very nice. But your life ended at you were 13. Interesting in the past life, hmm. and it was you know pretty yucky, nasty, and you were in battle with somebody else. So 13 then would be like literally 23 now or even 33, like you were, it was quite a while ago. I'm getting 18 past lives ago. Okay, so uh, I wanna go to your moment of death because when you do past life regression, at least this is how I do it, you go to the moment of death and whatever emotional frequencies you were stuck in then, is what need to what needs to be released and it can keep you stuck and limited in limitation now. So let's go when you were uh, okay. So there's fear and horror and uh, disbelief and it's over. Like it's over and it's over. Is it's like oh my gosh, it's over. It's not a good you know sense of relief. Okay, so. In the moment of death of that past life, any ways in which that's corded into you now, and especially right where your spine curves there, and is pulling it out of place and is causing you a whole lot of pain and it's hard to move, like really limiting you, more so sometimes than others. Let's witness that. With your permission, we'll call on Archangel Michael to cut all those emotions you were stuck in at the moment of your death in that past life that is pulling you, like literally it's causing pressure on the spine and pulling you to that life. And, oh, okay, there's something you need to learn from that life and that is about greed. And so in that life, you uh, were very, you were on the path to becoming extremely greedy. So Let's just witness that. There you go. There, your whole self relax. That's and that's that's why this came up now in this discussion around money is because in the past life it was about greed. So something you were you were in fight with, battle with another person it had something to do with greed and about money, and you were literally just trying to survive. But it was also around greed. And there you go there okay so that has so michael's cut the cut the cords there and so now let's go to that spot the area on your back where there's a lot of pull on it and ask that to very 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 gently you know as as you go through life so it's a progression will continue so ask this to continue for days weeks months as long as you need and very gradually straighten your spine as you are ready okay so you said no okay so let's straighten your spine as much as you are ready it's going to be a gradual process or there'll be too much pain there you go okay so now this has something to do with solar plexus so let's witness any ways in which you tend to give your power away you tend to i give your power away to keep the peace to avoid conflict Let's just witness that. Any ways in which you think, any ways in which you stay silent, even when you want to speak up because you believe nobody's going to value your opinion anyways or what you have to say. Let's witness and honor that. There you go. Let's just let that go. 
And we're going to ask universe, the source, to, if you are willing, awaken within you the understanding of what it feels like to be divinely powerful, to be divinely strengthened, so that you are embodying divine strength and divine power. That's very grounding. It's empowering. It's confidence, feeling good about yourself. Feel that divine strength and power within you. There you go. See, as you embody divine strength and power, your spine feels like it's ready to straighten. It's ready to straighten. So any conflict within you between your spine being straight, your the pain leaving your back, the limitation leaving your back, and feeling divinely empowered and strengthened, and being stuck in patriarchal power, greed, and battle. Let's honor that and then just let that go. Just let it go on all levels mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, cellular, and throughout all time and space. And let that go completely and absolutely in that past life. There you go. Take a deep breath in. Let that go. Okay. How are you feeling? Good. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. I can, um, yeah. I can feel some happiness bubbling up. <laughs> I felt like crying. <laughs> and of course, I I I didn't just let it go, but uh <laughs> which is uh, not un not surprising for me, but I do appreciate uh, a lot of what you said, especially about um, letting others take, I guess, my power and then therefore bringing in the divine mm. power. So I, re I really appreciate that. Mm, thank you. And you can listen back to that too. And if you want to let go and start crying, then you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you. And Debbie, thank you. Mm, that was beautiful. Wow. Thank you, Dolores. I hope you feel wonderful and keep bubbling over with some joy. <laughs> you deserve it. Uh, thank you for your beautiful, powerful question. And I love how that connected. I love how that connected anyway. Mm -hmm. it started out, should I present this? Should I present that? And it actually was all mm -hmm. germane to this conversation anyway. So yeah. it, it's it's all divine. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah have you. a beautiful day. Yes, you too. Both of you. Thanks. We're going to bring in one more person, one last person here at the end for a healing. And then we'll wrap up the show after this person. Um, and I'm going to bring on Nicole Rudolph. And Nicole, as she's connecting, how are you feeling, Joy? Are you like... <laughs> Is how do you feel when you do this work on people? Happy. <laughs> um, I yeah, just happy, relaxed. It's like this is where I'm supposed to be. It just it yeah, it just feels so so good. You know, talking comes from the head and it feels like you know the mind, the conditioned self, more or less, but you know, it's channeled as well. But once I get right into it, yes, I'm still speaking, but it doesn't feel like that anymore. It's just it's coming right through me. Nicole, can you take down the there you go. She got it. She got the memo. <laughs> How are you, Hi, Nicole? Nicole. I'm I'm really well. Thank you. Thank you. Hi Debbie. Hi Hi. I'm going to let you take over and connect with Joy, give her your name and whatever's going on and have a blessed healing. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Joy. Thank you so Hi, much for taking um, my call today. Hey, how can, um, what, if, yeah, what well, question have you got today? Yeah, there's, um, I have, I have in the last two years, um, had the opportunity to open up um, a beautiful mind, body, spirit center. Um, this is a dream that's been living in me for a long time. I work as a healer and um, as a medium myself. Um, and it was an opportunity uh, that arose after the death of my mother three years ago. I inherited a small amount of money. And the majority of that money has gone into 
the creation of the business. It was a real calling to open up this, this temple, as we call it. Uh, my partner and I, we had the opportunity. Um, I've always had, I've always been looked after the universe, but having been a single parent for most of my life, um, my eldest is now 20 and my youngest is 15. Um, there's been challenges with money um, and around our business now, I just feel like there's been one challenge after the other on a physical, a mental and an emotional level. There are constant challenges. Now, because we have so many modalities under the one umbrella, we have breath work, we have yoga, um, I do my healing work. We have um, saunas and ice tubs and cold tubs. Um, it just seems like there's, I, I, I'm feeling there is an obstruction of some sort. Now, I do have people finding me for my work, but I feel that there's potentially some kind of obstruction, maybe, to the evolution of, of this entity that is wanting to birth itself through this, this business of ours. And so we are challenged financially. And I'd like to understand what, um, yeah, what, what that is. Okay. And I must say, I really resonate to what you were saying about feeling that connection with spirit. I mean, I, I daily, I am very committed to being in right relationship with life, right relationship with spirit. Um, so I'm really confused because I feel like I'm doing all the right things. Um, yeah. That's where I'm at. So the main thing you're looking for is like all the challenges are preventing the money from coming in and you're, is it you're afraid of running out of money or it's just taking more? And so it's more around money then by keeping it going. Is that it? Yeah, I, I guess we're, we're, we're wanting to get to a place of having enough financial freedom so that we can continue to, to birth our spiritual work, you know, um, have a retreat, have a, some land where we can, where I can do my work from. That is really important. Um, and th there isn't an opportunity, there is no option to give up, but it is about expanding this work. And for me going globally as well and helping people on, on a, on a mm, bigger okay. scale. So it won't just be in person then? Like you want to do long distance healings as well. Oh yeah. Such. And I okay. have, but I okay. yeah, I don't know what is if there is an obstruction and um how to go about that. Okay. So first of all, I want to say congratulations on on opening the center. That's awesome. Love Thank to hear you. that, you know, lifelong dream, and then you take action on it. Incredible. Okay. So when you said you put the majority of the money into it, there was just a little bit of anger. So let's witness that. Not a lot, just a little bit. Okay, so yeah, I'm not sure what that's about. It's kind of stuck energy there. So anger, whatever, all emotions have consciousness. So anger, whatever, for whatever reasons, you're staying stuck and causing, well, what's, anger wants to say something. What's, what is that, anger? You don't, somebody doesn't want the progression of this business. Did your mom believe in spiritual work? Very much so. Hmm. Okay, because your mom was coming in. So maybe it's an ancestral. So anyone in your mom's, your ancestral lineage who is putting, you know, trying to put a halt on the business. Yeah, there's something heavy coming in there. See, when you were talking about it, it just feels heavy and dense. Eh? Oh, there you go. Let's bring this into the, the new earth. Okay, so when I said that, there you go. Whoa, that was intense. That was matrix anger. Matrix anger, I just call it that term. Is any dark energies, dark frequencies, even entities? Oh, there's entities there. Okay, so, okay, entities, come on out. Yeah, we see you. No, we're not scared of you. Come on out, come on out. Okay, entities, you have no business in being here whatsoever. You have no business being in this 
mind, body, spirit, soul, center, healing, release, now, be gone now on all levels, gone now. So shoka basa wala sa shoko ko wala sa so shoka basa wala ka so ko shoka basa wala sa shoka basa wala ka to ko basa to ko basa shoka basa wala ka ha wala sa so shoka basa wala ka ha wala sa so shoka basa wala ka there you go there's the anger really really black energy coming up from there it's almost like really black smoke billowing up okay so just See that, just breathe, breathe that away, breathe that away, breathe that away. Any ways in which your center, your business, a concept, the thought of it, the, the vision of it has been grounded or rooted in dark energy, 3D matrix consciousness, release that on all levels. Any ways in which your ancestors have been stuck in 3D consciousness and keeping this stuck. Release that now. There you go. Okay, there. Okay, so now there's shame coming up from that same center spot, but it's it's not black and heavy. It's shame. So we're just going to witness the shame. Any shame, you, your mother, your ancestors, anybody in your immediate family, anybody feels around success in being successful around receiving money, ever increasing amounts of money. Let's witness that, acknowledge that, accept it, just accept it. It wants to be accepted and then let it be released easily and effortlessly. There you go. Okay, so now we're going to ask source, the divine space to bless your center, to bless all the practices you have in there, all the different modalities, all the different healing practitioners, there you go, yourself there. Let's bless all of that. Just keep blessing that, blessing that. There you go. There's growth. It's like I see a lotus flower just blossoming, growth, blossoming. There you go. And along with that, let's see you receiving money. As the, any hesitation around receiving money, any ways in which you believe being spiritual and offering spiritual services should cancel out the need for money. Yeah, let's go ahead and release that one. Let's release that. Any ways in which you believe you can't be spiritual, you can, you can offer spiritual services and receive money. Any ways in which you believe if you receive money, you are receiving dense energies. Let's go ahead and honor that, acknowledge all of that, and then just let that go. There you go. Okay, so that released when you're talking about your center, the density there. I just want to see if there's any more. No, I keep seeing when I see your center, I see a, a lotus flower, a white lotus flower, just blossoming, just beautiful, so beautiful. And at the center now, there's lightness. There's actually a column of light coming up. And as it comes up, it spreads out, it spreads out. There you go. There's some happiness and joyfulness. Okay, so the divine child just showed up. So your what this means is that your your business, your center there has been uh, blessed with the divine child, the innocence and the beauty of the divine child. There you go. So shukabasa wala so shuko ko wala sa wala so shukabasa wala ka awala sa so shukabasa wala ka wala so shuko ko wala sa wala so shukabasa wala ka. Let's bless the expansion of your center and bless the receiving of ever increasing amounts of money, and that supports in turn supports. The expansion of your center and supports more and more people. So So it all works together harmoniously, gently, easily, respectfully. So there you go. Take a deep breath in. Let that go. Okay. There you go, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joy. I appreciate you. Okay. Appreciate you. How are you feeling? 
I'm feeling good. Um, it would make a lot of sense. We, um, we've had a lot of people with a lot of dark energies come through our center. And mm -hmm. uh, I do, I do a lot of clearings in the center, but um, it's not just myself in the center, which was mm -hmm. the question, you know, it, it may also be an ancestral thing down someone else's line that's coming in and wanting that obstruction. So it would make a lot of sense. I feel that um, I'd like to do more blessings in the center. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really appreciate what you've done today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was amazing. Amazing. I'll bring myself back on. Um, actually, I'll just remove your pen. Oh, my God. I had such a pain in my head when you recognized the dark energy and were extracting that from her, how is that whole session so powerful? That was impressed. That was a little intense. I don't really, those entities were fighting me. And I, that's why I went into light language like I did. And it was just, cause yeah, I, I don't, I've never done that on a show before, but it was called for. So I just, yeah, went with it. And, uh, they were, they didn't want to leave, but they did. And that was so interesting. And it's just so I could ask major curious mind. So for somebody like Nicole, because she opened a center with her partner, her, I guess, boyfriend, male companion. Um, so is it clear when you go in there, oh, this is a dark entity energy around Nicole, or is it possible it's the boyfriend? Or is it possible, like she was saying at the end, maybe um, somebody she's worked on or has come through the center? How do you know? How do you identify that? Uh, if I'm asked about that, yeah, I can see what's going on between two people. Or Yeah, there are people. I mean, when we work with people, yes, people come to us with dark energy. And that's got to be released. And as healers, or she's got a physical space that can be left there, picked up there. So yeah, there is a constant clearing and, and clearing ourselves in any space and such. And when I was seeing the energy there, I was seen as a whole. And I saw, yeah, as you, you know, I'll experience a lot of dark energy there that was keeping it stuck and that some of that was ancestral. So, but I didn't look specifically at any people. But she can follow up if if wanted, because that's I'm fascinated. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell people, I know courageinaction.com is your website. I know there's a lot available there for people who they could purchase something and just listen to it and have releases. Um, and you have amazing price points. You're in Canada too. So for mm -hmm. people like the USA, what we pay you for you is like kind of 70% of mm -hmm. really what your number yeah. is there. But yeah. tell people what can they do with you? What do you have rolling out? What's going on, Joy? <laughs> yeah. Uh thank you for that. Go to um yeah if you want to go to my website courage in action i n action dot com and scroll about halfway down the home page it'll say join the community and you'll get some free gifts there when you join. So there are messages from spirit. Some are written and some are audio. So there's four audios there. So they have either written, they're different, you know, the written ones and the audio ones. So that's free. All you need to do is join. And then I've got some uh, some more, especially in December, I've got a lot of free gifts planned. I've got had some ideas come up. And, but yeah, there will be some free stuff. You'll be, you know, person will be receiving on a monthly basis and that, of course, plus, you know, the updates for any shows and that. Okay, beautiful. And folks, you could book appointments with her if you like. And she has several services. Obviously, this is one working directly, but I know because I use Joy myself. She's part of my toolkit. <laughs> and she also does this, I still think it's mind-blowing, this remote and scan clearing. I Yeah, that's where I'm like, I know you're the real deal because there's <laughs> no way anybody could know the things you talk about and clear out of me. And these are old, old, old childhood things that you're aware of. And you've gone in there and had full conversations with my child, which are kind of hilarious and come back <laughs> out and, 
you know, and you share as you're doing it in real time. It's pretty fascinating stuff, but I am so grateful for you and the work you did. Thank God, you know, you found yourself in this lifetime and that you've been on this path as you have. I think you're just amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Yeah, that what you're talking about there, that's done from the picture. That's a scan and clearing. And yeah, we go, the person's got to be ready for that because we go really deeply into the unconscious conditioning. And then there's the phone sessions as well. But you were referring to the scan and clearing there. Yeah, and even though it's it's unconscious, subconscious, I'm still aware of a lot. I knew bing, 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 like check, check, everything you were saying, but it's more... Mm, it's so buried that it's like, yes, I, I have an awareness of this, but then there's like the, what you, what do you do with it? And, mm -hmm. and so many of us are trying so many things and you don't see always changes in those root, root, root situations. Um, so I guess I had a level of acceptance until you were pulling them out. And I'm like, Oh my God, this is like <laughs> amazing stuff. Really mm -hmm. amazing stuff. Thank you so much for coming on the show again today. We have to have you back in the future. And again, folks, if you love this, you've got joy, go to her website, courageinaction.com, sign up for her membership, subscribe to this channel, like, and then you can start letting us know if you want to come back on as a caller for a show in the future, right? And posting it in the comments isn't great because I don't get that. But, you know, if you're connected with us, then we'll get it. So mm -hmm. courageinaction.com. I'm going to end today's show with this quote. Life is a canvas and you are the artist. Every brushstroke mm -hmm. of effort creates a masterpiece of possibility. Subscribe and like and comment to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Thank you to everybody who was so courageous and beautiful coming on the show today. I appreciate you all. Amazing questions. Leave a comment, share the show. Next week on the program, I am featuring the amazing Daniel Scranton, who is the channel of the 9D Arcturian Council, Pleiadians, Archangels, Yeshua, and the Hathors. And Daniel also channels light languages. Thank you so much for joining us today on Dare to Dream. <laughs>